welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. We're going to do a short video here. I've adjusted the camera on the Solo, and so we're going to take it for another quick flight just to test out the angle. I've basically got it uh, pretty much uh, pointed straight up. Now, I've got eight satellites right now. I checked hover. I'm all good to go. really like to have ten, but I'm running a little bit short of time. So I'm going to venture it with eight and see if I don't pick up um, another couple satellites because it's still saying I'm good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to arm the motors. And so the motors are armed. And I've got it up. Now that looks a little bit better for camera angle. I've got it almost straight up. Or straight out. So uh, let's see if I can put in some, do some head cam on this one so you can kind of see how it's all arranged. And again, I think, it, you know, after I showed in the last episode how I modified the, uh, the cable coming out of there to come out the back and underneath, <clears throat> excuse me, I think what I'm going to do is 3D print some extended feed for this also, because you notice the camera cable comes down, it comes down rather low. Now, the Diike will do 180 degree flip, uh, too. You can set it in the firmware. So I could turn the camera upside down and have this point up and I may actually do that uh, also instead of having it come down below so hopefully all this is getting in the video so I'm now up to 12 satellites so I feel a little bit better so uh, I'm gonna now try taking this with this this up a little bit more and I'm gonna try uh, taking this out the video doesn't seem too bad. Now, now, obviously, there's no gimbal on this, and I've got a uh, two-axis gimbal I'm thinking about putting on here, but I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Um, because I tell you what, for hobby flying, uh, this isn't bad. You know, so what, it's got a little bit of jitter. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it. And uh, so that's not too bad. There's a little bit of jitter jittering in it. And, uh, but it's not too bad. And again, let's fly out there on this buoy. Let's get it out there. Again, I mean for, um, you know, so with die eye on it, eh, you're looking at maybe 310. I've now got invested in this bird. Well, actually 350 with the extra battery I purchased. So 350 for a uh, well, I'm going to knock on wood here when I say this, a well-behaved GPS bird with a camera. And I can jump to 4K on this. Now, granted, it's not a gimbal. And I'm not trying to say, guys, this is a Phantom. I actually think this is, in, in one way, better than a Phantom. So, uh, my Phantom 3, I've had a lot of reliability issues with it. It's just let me down too many times for a DJI product, uh, which is actually a little bit surprising. So I'm now out there, roughly 400 meters, passing 400 meters. Where's the red buoy? Let's see if we can make it all the way out to the red buoy. Um, I got the panel antennas. And uh, I'm closing on the red buoy. And again, a little jitter, but not bad. I think this will actually be okay for, for my ice flying uh, endeavors. Uh, I am going. I am working on building um, another custom one, actually. So I've been following JJ Rotor Geek, and uh, he's built this all-weather uh, drone, which I think is pretty cool. And I'm going to try to copy it um, because I want to fly in crazy weather. So I've now passed the red buoy. So I've now made it out there, ooh, 600 and some meters. So. I'm going to turn around and bring it back this way. Uh, whoops! No, I don't want to head towards the bridge. Look at the look at the uh, look at the sun over the bridge. I tell you what, that is just beautiful. Um, just beautiful. I want to swipe over here, and so I want I want to get the map. I got to pinch in on the map. Let's see where we're at on the map. So. Uh, Nope, I want to turn that way. I want to turn back back this way. And 
it. Whoops. The, the one thing I just don't like on this, and the phone is plenty powerful enough, so I know it's not in the phone, so it must be in the application, is the delay in, um, you know, the, the arrow moving. Because I really depend upon that for navigation, because I could actually navigate with that over top. Because as you can see from the, the video, I'm far enough out where, where I can't, <laughs> you know, land is just a, just a line in the horizon. And so... Uh, I'm just bringing it back this way. So I re really, uh, you know, when I get that far out, really just depend upon orientation of the uh, arrow to bring it back. So wind's kicking up a little bit from the south. And again, this is uh, looking pretty good. I may try to mess around a little bit more trying to get the 3D, or 3D, I keep calling it 3D, the 360 degree camera to work with the HDMI port. Uh, my other cheap um, Chinese knockoff camera would not work with the HDMI port as you saw in a prior video. Uh, but the Thai-Eye does seem to work, so I'll have links to the Thai-Eye down below. Now I really love that little camera for, you know, sub a hundred bucks. Uh, the fact it comes with different filters, has, a fil has filter threads on it. Um, and everything else is just way, way, way cool. So, also over, the, you know, as the weather gets colder, I'm probably do some videos on uh, doing a little bit of digital stabilization with this. You know, I still think I could probably go up a little bit. Let me let me pull up. Well, yeah, it's not bad. I got a pretty, but an even mix of. Um, horizon there now you notice the angle it's because i'm taking wind from the south as, as i mentioned that's why and so the copter is trying to adjust itself um you know if i really wanted to i can fix that in post that's not huge so again i'm bringing it back and that shouldn't be too far away And uh, I want to get it. I think it's just down. Yep, right there it is. Right there it is. So I'm going to fly back my way. I'm going to have to start experimenting with like, like the cable cam and that kind of stuff now that I got the camera situation sort of figured out. And we're just kind of flying up the beach. Again, I think this is going to be great for ice flying. So again, just kind of flying like the spark, just only bigger. And we're just kind of flying up the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to spin it back around. And we're gonna fly it back down towards me. Gosh, I love flying this thing. This thing, I mean, it, it, it you know, if it had a, a, you know, better integrated gimbal system that wasn't stupid like its existing one, this thing I, I think would compete with the Spark. I mean, I just love flying it. It is so smooth, just so freaking smooth. And, uh, you know, so you can see the lighthouse, you can see the lighthouse, you can see the blue water bridge. I'm picking up quite a bit of wind from my back. I'm getting about a 15 mile an hour gust from my back. That's why you see it bumping around up there. So anyways, I got to go pick up my grandson from school. So we're going to have to call this one a day and land it. So we'll give you some views of the lake. And we'll bring it down. And here we go. I'm going to back it up a little bit. And I'm going to square out the yaw a little bit. And I'm going to bring it down right, right on the rocks. All right, right on the rocks. So another great flight of the Solo. I think I'm getting used to it. This is going to make a great ice copter. 
So, uh, hey, you can't complain about that. Solo, Lake Huron, camera working, flights out there. This thing is super. So, if you haven't got one and you still can get in on the deal, I tell you what, get it. This is a must-have bird for a collection. Let me know what you guys are thinking about for lunch. Subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.